the purpose of this video is to provide a general overview of the software architecture of Puma version 1.0 and how the software works for a typical simulation. Each of the features shown in this video will be explained in their own videos as well as in more detail in the documentation file. The first section that will be discussed is domain generation. Since the purpose of Puma is to run microscale simulations and to calculate material properties, a computational domain must first be created on which to run these simulations. There are two categories of domain generation. The first is artificial material generation and the second is microtomography import. For the artificial material generator, we can create an artificial carbon fiber material which creates a collection of randomly oriented intersecting cylinders to reproduce the material microstructure of a typical carbon fiber preform. There are then three ideal geometries which can be created, which are a sphere, box, and cylinder. For this tutorial, we'll create a sphere of radius 40 inside a domain of 100 cubed. And you can see that the artificial material appears on the right. For the microtomography import, which will again have its own video, there are three basic steps. The first is to load the TIFF stack into Puma. The second is to select the desired subdomain and then import it into memory. The third is to select a grayscale threshold. So for this tutorial, we will import a TIFF stack, which is from the sample of fiber form that comes with this distribution of Puma. We will then select a 256 cubed sample and import that into memory. As you can see from the image on the right, which shows a single slice of the TIFF stack, each voxel, which is a 3D pixel, has a grayscale value from 0 to 255. The probability distribution function of the grayscale values is shown on a plot. There are two peaks on the plot. The first larger peak is the average grayscale value of the voids. The second peak is the average grayscale value of the material. We have to select a value between these two peaks approximately at the inflection point here at which anything above or at this value will be considered a material and anything below this value will be considered void. For the provided sample of fiber form, a value of 87 was found to be appropriate as a threshold value. Once a threshold has been selected, the image on the right will then be displayed as a binary image. You can vert back and forth between the original and binary images in order to make sure that the threshold section selection was correct and experiment with different values in order to obtain the most correct threshold. At this point, microtomography import is complete. We will now move on to the visualization aspect of the software. The visualization is based on the marching cubes algorithm, which takes the 3D domain and it represents it as a collection of triangles, typically between 10 million and 100 million triangles for a tomography data set. These triangles are then visualized using OpenGL where the shading of each triangle is based on the normal with respect to an assumed light source and the camera position. In order to create a 3D visualization after the threshold is complete, one can simply press the Create 3D Visualization or select Visualization Generate 3D Visualization and the visualization will appear. The detail of the individual fibers can be seen as well as features such as hollow fibers and fiber clusters. For the material properties aspects of Puma, there are three different material properties that can be calculated in Puma version 1.0, which are porosity, surface area, and thermal conductivity. The porosity is calculated as a function of the grayscale threshold and is automatically calculated and shown here once a threshold has been applied. The surface area is calculated using the marching cubes algorithm, where the overall surface area is found as a sum of the individual triangle areas. It's shown as both the raw surface area in meters squared and the specific surface area in one over meters which indicates the surface area divided by the enclosing volume. The number of triangles for this particular sample is also shown. The final material property which can be calculated is the thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity module, the theory of which is described in more detail in the documentation as well as it's in, in its own tutorial video, uses a finite difference method to calculate the bulk effective thermal conductivity based on the microstructure and conductivity of its constituent parts. To run the simulation, you have to select how many materials are 
in use. You then have to select the low cutoff and high cutoff for each material, as well as the conductivity for each phase. In this case, we're running with carbon fibers at a grayscale of 87 and above, with a conductivity value of 12, and air for the voids with the conductivity value of 0 0.0257, which is the value for standard atmospheric conditions. The simulation uses an iterative method to solve the linear system of equations for an imposed temperature gradient in the x, y, and z directions. Once the simulation is complete, the results will appear showing the conductivity in the x direction here, the y direction here, and the z direction here. We will now move on to the oxidation simulation, which is explained in detail in the documentation as well as in its own video. The oxidation simulation simulates the decomposition of carbon fibers when subjected to a high enthalpy flow. I'll set up an example simulation that will run while I explain the, the details. A buffer zone is placed above the material, as shown in the visualization, and the particles are initially distributed in this zone. Each particle represents a certain number of oxygen molecules defined by the user. The particles are then diffused down to the surface through a random walk method. They react with and oxidize the surface, causing the material decomposition, as shown in the example. As the material decomposes, the buffer zone will recess with the material, as you can see with the blue section shifting down. This concludes the software overview tutorial. All of these sections are expanded on in their own video and are explained in detail in the documentation file.